The question is that the motion be agreed to. The Honourable Jerry Browning. Mr Speaker, that was an audition uh, before the Parliament by Chris Hipkins. But this has been the week where we've seen the dance of the deputies. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this uh, week earlier we had the issue of uh, Ron Mark, uh, New Zealand's answer to George Spate, to, uh, having a go at uh, ousting Winston Peters. Everyone thinks it's Tracy Martin. It's actually Winston Peters he wants to get rid of. Dad, uh, Ron is one of those men who've got a lot of experience with a lot of parties. In fact, just 18 months ago, he would have been part of any party that would take him. And we know that from discussions that he had in all sorts of places around the country. So here we have this week, poor old Tracy Martin coming under the pump from uh, Ron Mark. The question is, what's Tracy Martin done? And the answer is nothing, which is probably the reason why Ron is in that sort of situation. But the most uh, fascinating thing is, Meanwhile, over in Labor, meanwhile, over in Labor, all, all of the uh, deputies are starting to line up. We're seeing the parade of talent on the horizon. It's extraordinary. And hot off the press, we hear that one of the hot contenders now is Carmel Cipollone, making quite a strong, strong bid. Uh, she's one of those experienced people who came back into Parliament after a short burst uh, some time ago, just recently, only to announce to the whole Parliament, oh, a committee stage. That's you. When did that happen? Mr Speaker, it's that sort of discovery that could be useful for a uh, Labor Party deputy leader because they might accidentally discover a little bit of caucus loyalty as well. Mr Speaker, then there's the bolter from Christchurch, Megan Woods. Oh. I've got to say, Megan, that Cardassian-esque makeover screams ambition. Oh. Day after day, Mr Speaker, this member comes into the House, gives very uh, cogent, very passionate, uh, very, uh, you'd say, well-structured but completely irrelevant speeches, and uh, offers that argument with the most beautiful enunciation. And frankly, Mr Speaker, day after day, week after week, she wins the seventh-born debating prize over and over again. <laughs> Mr Speaker, there is, um, it would be uh, wrong of me to, um, uh, to, to be too harsh on the next uh, contender. Um, I've got to say that uh, a couple of things, though, that nothing screams leadership ambition like the Hollywood headshots on the front page of a weekly magazine. And I've got to say, Senator Jacinda Ardern carried it well. Um, I, I've got to say, a lot of people over this side thought that she carried that well. In fact, so well, most people didn't recognise it for quite some weeks after it was actually published. Mr Speaker, there's a problem here, because so far this year, there have been over, over 19 questions asked in the House on the issue of small business. 19 primary questions asked in the House by the National Party. Patsies set up with the opposition spokesperson. And what have we seen? Utter failure. Utter failure. And today, an absolute set up. And what do we get? Not a thing. Nothing at all. So my advice to, uh, to Jacinda is to break away from Grant Robertson and his sort of uh, strange little um, uh, Machiavellian Walter Mitty type world and strike out on her own and see what might be possible. Mr Speaker, then there is the candidate, the omnipresent, the omnipositional Bill Twyford. Oh. Unbelievable. One minute he's here in Wellington putting his arm around Grant Robertson in commiseration. Next minute he's in Auckland anointing David Cunliffe with the Red Rose of Socialism. Mr Speaker, this guy's everywhere. No one can do a 180 like uh, our friend over there. So the government should sell state houses. The government shouldn't sell state, sell, sell state houses. The private sector should engage in social housing. The private sector shouldn't engage in social housing. And then the classic today, interest rates are too high for young people to buy houses. Interest rates are so low now that young people can't buy houses. Yeah. Mr Speaker, this man has got so many positions and so many sort of uh, uh, twists and turns to him, it uh, will be no surprise that after the deputy leadership vote is taken, anyone, even when he loses it, he won't believe it. Mr Speaker, so, 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 oh, you saved the best to last. So, so where does all that leave the Labor Party and their deputy leader quest? Well, Mr Speaker, I look across at my old friend, Annette King. And uh, she sits there loyally beside Mr Little, almost, almost uh, in agony sitting next to Mr Little. 
uh, supposedly warming the seat for someone else. All I can say to her is I move to predict, hang in there baby, soon you'll be a queen. Yeah.